Hey, good morning. Intro to entrepreneurship students. <clears throat> Happy Sunday morning. Um, so we've got the spring 2017 semester underway. And uh, that's pretty exciting. But man, I can't believe week one is already almost over. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this. What I want to do is just kind of walk you through the course. Um, I, some, I used to put it up like right away, but then I decided that doesn't make any sense. Um, so what I like to do now is, is um, like after the end of the week one, I do this because everybody's still trying to get their book and et cetera. So let's take a look. I'm going to kind of walk you through this and uh, kind of give you the, you've already seen Blackboard, but I'm going to give you another peek at Blackboard. So um, let's take a look at the agenda. So I'm going to go over course objectives, course overview, et cetera, grading. Um, and so I, I like to start. Uh, with giving my background because in my opinion and and you know you, you could tell other instructors I say this and they may or may not uh, appreciate it but I, I like to know who's teaching me and um, and I like to know that their experience um, is directly connected to what it is that they're teaching me so I always ask my, my instructors when I was getting my master's degree I was always like yeah so what's your background exactly and um, because you want to make sure you're being taught by the right people, right? So, like, if I was to try to teach you about medicine, um, you know, you would, you should absolutely like run out of the room, right? Because I don't know squat about medicine, um, but I do know about uh, business, and I do know a lot about entrepreneurship. So, I'm a, a full-time faculty member here at Chabot College. Um, in my second year, um, I helped Jan Novak start the. Uh, the program. Uh, we worked on it in 2009. Uh, course was approved in 2010 by the state and I've been teaching in the program since 2010 part-time. Um, they created a full-time position a couple years ago. I applied and, and was offered the job. Uh, but before that and even now I was an entrepreneur. So I've started seven companies. I've sold three of them. Um, currently CEO of a company called Crescendo Media Solutions. And um, we operate as a company called Marketing ESQ. Um, that company started to pop, kind of exciting. And um, uh, maybe I'll get to talk about some exciting stuff that we're doing as, a, as the semester unfolds. Uh, before that, I was the founder CEO of a company called SEC Compliance. Um, we, that, that company was a rocket ship. Uh, we did extraordinary things in a very short period of time. And the company was acquired uh, by a New York Stock Exchange listed company. Uh, I'm still helping them as a consultant on, on various things related to crowdfunding. But I'm a, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I mean, I've got 10 started, but the reality is there's really about seven of them. Um, there's a bunch of them that were ideas that we spent some time on. We put a little bit of money into, but but they didn't go anywhere. But the ones that were, were really something, there's seven of them. Uh, I made my bones on Wall Street with Morgan Stanley, and uh, which is a, a tough place to uh, to kind of cut your teeth. Um, uh, but a great place to go learn because if you can make your bones there, you know, as the song says, if you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. Um, but I'm a St. Mary's uh, MBA, love St. Mary's, go Gales. I think they're ranked 23rd, their basketball team is. So a little school doing big things. Uh, but I'm a, the reason I, I, I come to Chabot is I'm a Chabot alum. Uh, this, is, this is where... Um, uh, everything kind of changed for me. I went to Tennyson High and dropped out of Tennyson. And um, I just, I learned different, right? So the whole thought that I could um, get through the traditional school system, it just didn't work for me. And, um, and so I, I came to Chabot uh, in my 20s and uh, took a, a four-hour economics class on a Saturday morning and kind of turned all the light bulbs out of my head. And uh, 18 months later, I got hired at Morgan Stanley. I had learned enough that I was able to kind of parlay that into uh, uh, an extraordinary opportunity at, at what is still the premier investment bank on Wall Street. So I'm a Hayward kid. I uh, went to Tennyson High, La Vista. It's now Cesar Chavez. I went to Roos Elementary. So uh, um, I grew up, I don't know, a mile from, from where Chabot is. So it's kind of fun getting to come to the campus every day. So um, course learning outcomes, there's a bunch of stuff that we're going to do. But for me, really the, and if you hear a bunch of click clack, I've just, we just got a puppy and this thing is 
going nuts all over my office. It is, and I've got two other big dogs. I've got three dogs, and the other two big, the two other two big dogs are like, what the right? So uh, if you hear a bunch of noise or maybe a little growling, that's what it is. Um, you know, for me, really the key takeaway here is that I want you to have the skills to identify and assess a viable business opportunity. Um, I mean, that really is what entrepreneurship is for me. Entrepreneurship is, it sure sounds sexy, but at the end of the day, it really comes down to identifying opportunities and then being put into a position to do something about it. So everybody has ideas, right? You know, the big challenge that you're going to have is, oh, I've got four, which one do I choose, right? My recommendation is take out a quarter and keep flipping until you pick one, right? Uh, but at the end of the day, when you come up with something that's an interesting idea, what do you do? Like, what's the very first thing you should do? And, and that's really what this class is to me. This, there's going to be very little theory. Uh, there is some because I think it's super impactful. Uh, but for the most part, I'm focusing on, like, what should I do next if I've got a business idea? Because I think that's the, um, that'll make this class much more impactful. Um, there's a couple books. Uh, you know, this uh, entrepreneurship theory process practice, it's pretty expensive at the bookstore. But if you go to Amazon, Amazon's got it for, you can rent it. Uh, you can rent it for 30 bucks. And, um, and I think they just ship it to you. Uh, so it's $32 to rent it. Or you can get you could go back to like the eighth edition and and it'd still be okay so like you could buy the eighth edition for a penny right it's used it's acceptable it it ain't pretty well like you're getting it from goodwill that's kind of nice but there's a whole bunch of these things for a penny you could use the eighth edition but here's what you got to do if you go back to the eighth edition is that what you're going to have to do is that when i assign a reading like i'm going to say uh, you know, you got to read, uh, you know, read chapter two. Chapter two might be a little bit different in the eighth edition than it is in the 10th edition. So, you know, there might be a little bit of syncing up uh, that you've got to do. And I can help with that if you want to, if you want to take that route. Um, the, the questions on the exam are going to be pretty darn close. It's just the publishers, they update these books every once in a while so they can go back and charge 324 bucks. Because at some point, there's a whole bunch of these that are for sale, used for a penny. And the book publisher doesn't make any money on used books. So is it a scam? No, it's not a scam. This is the U.S., right? This is America. This is, this is what we do, right? This is why cars stop working after about eight or nine years. Um, so there's two books, right? One that was, was, uh, uh, was in the list uh, when you registered. Uh, you can get it for a penny. Okay, so I don't want to hear any I couldn't afford the book excuses because if you can get it for a penny and you're ha and it's four bucks to ship it uh, and you don't have four bucks, uh, come see me and I will give you four bucks. Okay, no excuses. Um, uh, and then you could sell the book for a penny. And so you, you, your investment is, is nothing, right? The second book is The Innovator Solution. We only read three chapters, but they are the most impactful three chapters ever. And that book, that book is also, are you ready for it? That book is also a penny. So I really try to keep the cost of the books down. This book was written in 2003. Now there is a newer edition, right? So the reason I'm showing you that picture is that like you can spring and get this book, but it's the same book. I, I think they just made the pages prettier and it's $21. Don't, don't pay $21. Pay a penny, right? Uh, 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 it's, a, it's a really good book. Uh, let's see. Well, you can get the Audible for free with a trial. They used to have a Kindle version, but it was really bad. Um, somebody did a really bad job converting it. But this book, and I'll tell you all about it, this book changed the way I think. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, uh, I am currently a student myself. I'm taking a, a class at the Harvard Business School this, this semester online and uh and it's rough uh as a matter of fact when i'm done with this i've got about three hours worth of homework um and it's on this 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 uh 
uh, innovator solution strategy called a disruptive innovation. So it's it is an amazing book. Um, or I promise you, I would not have you go spring and, and pay the penny to get the book. Uh, it is it is impactful. It's one of those books that you read um, the first time and you're completely confused, and then the second time you read it, you start to understand. The third time you read, it, you're like, oh my gosh. Fourth time you read it, you go start a company and you go kick everybody's tail, which is what I did. I'll tell you guys about that more about more about that later. So, course is is broken really into five parts, right? We're going through right now uh, uh, the first two parts, entrepreneurship mindset, where we're just going to look at a bunch of videos and try to understand what is it about an entrepreneur. So this is kind of like the honeymoon period. Um, uh, we, uh, you know, we're going to get in and and uh, and read some stuff. Uh, the the third, fourth, fifth. That's where there's some meat that we put on the bones, right? So weeks one through three, you know, what is an entrepreneur? What makes them different? You read a couple of chapters. So here's a gig. If you don't have the book yet, because you you know you didn't have the penny, um, uh, or you hadn't come to me to get the the four bucks so you could have it shipped, uh, no worries. Right, the quiz will go up, but the quiz will stay up. But here's the gig. If you don't have the book and you don't expect to have it for like a week, I need a text or an email saying, "Hey, Cologne, I don't have the book yet, but I'm getting it." That way, I know. You're just not hanging out there in left field, right? We got to have a plan in order to get that book so you could take the quizzes and pass them. Because you'll see that you you got to pass the quizzes in order to do well in the class. Uh, the second is entrepreneur, entrepreneurial pathways. So there really are three pathways to becoming an entrepreneur. We explore them, right? You know, either you do a startup, which a lot of people think, you know, that's, that's what an entrepreneur does is start something new. That's not always the case. In some cases, you buy something that's either broken or underperforming, and you make it better, right? You add your own secret sauce, and now this thing's you know taken back off again. That happens a lot. There's also the opportunity to act as an entrepreneur buying a franchise, and um, some franchises are a little bit more restrictive than others. But at the end of the day, there's still great opportunities. And what I want to do is make sure that we explore sort of the pathways because there's different risk profiles for each one of these. And so sometimes people are like, there's no way I can be an entrepreneur. There's too much risk. We'll, we'll buy a business or buy a franchise. Well, I don't have a lot of money. Okay, well, great. Then, you know, there's other pathways. And so we explore that. We spend a couple weeks. We read a few chapters. We do some assignments. And we, we take another quiz. Week seven is when we start to put some meat on this thing. So the very first thing we do is we've got project one that I'll talk about. This is also when we read The Innovator Solution. So I'll put a link up to the to that Amazon page so you guys know where to get it. Then that weeks for five weeks, almost six weeks, we do feasibility analysis. And feasibility analysis for me is market research where we actually go talk to our potential customers and we run the numbers. You know, because for me, uh, unless you run the numbers and you can determine whether this thing can be profitable or not, at the end of the day, it's just a hobby, right? And if and if you're looking for a hobby, go play golf. It's a lot of fun. It really is. You get you go out with your friends and you're out in the in the air and you're getting a little exercise because you're walking. And if you're grown up, you can have a little flask with you. Uh, if you're looking for a hobby, <clears throat> don't start a company. Go play golf. It's a lot of fun. Um, uh, so you got to run the numbers. I've got a, a simple way to help you figure that part out. Um, as a matter of fact, I've got students that um, send me this document years later asking me what I think. Uh, and then the pitch, the last thing we do, and this is for those of you that are really, really um, shy, um, you get to create an elevator pitch and then post it up on YouTube. Um, and it's, it's a great experience uh, and it's gonna make you feel uncomfortable and you can do it privately and invite me so that you know other people don't see it if you really wanna do that. But um, at the end of the day, if you've got a, a rock star idea, you need to figure out what sort of tools uh, do you have at your disposal to tell millions of people, not, you know, like the 10 or 12 people that are in your life? And, um, and the way you get to do that is by learning how to give a, a significant pitch, a solid pitch, and, um, and then put it, up into, uh, uh, put it up on the Internet and then figure out a way you can promote it. So project one, let's just recap, just give you the, the short story, right? Heavy emphasis placed on value proposition. The whole idea is why do you exist? Why, why does the business that you think you want to start, why do you exist? 
And uh, who's your market? Who are the people you think would buy these? So I'm always getting a lot of uh, uh, clothing companies and t-shirt companies and uh, every semester I get at least one uh, fitness company and I love them all. I love them all because people are fickle and, uh, and they will swap from one brand to the next. Uh, so there's always the opportunity for new designers, uh, new artists to sort of enter the marketplace with, with their products. You know, but what you need to understand is have clarity on really who are the people that would use it. So if you're going to be doing yoga pants, let's assume you're going to be hitting, you know, women between the ages of maybe 16 and 32. Yeah, you're going to find some older women wearing wearing uh, yoga pants. Uh, but, you know, that market begins to shrink significantly. And um, uh, or women that are fitness oriented, then you're going to want to make sure that you are you've got your arms around how many uh, 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 women are really in this fitness thing. And um, or or what are the ages where women are more active? Unless you're going to build yoga pants for men, uh, in which case uh, that's just wrong. Men shouldn't be wearing clothes that tight. Um, let's see market research. It's going to be a lot of fun, but it's also going to sort of be that challenge, right? Because you've got to we got to put together an online survey and get like a couple hundred people to take the survey, because when you when you do the survey. You're going to ask men, hey, would you be interested in wearing yoga pants? And, um, uh, and, the, and all the guys that say yes, you, you probably want to unfriend on social media. It's just me. Um, but you're going to want to ask people, right, you know, do you wear yoga pants uh, just for the gym? Or, or now, obviously, it's, it's more for fashion. And uh, you're, how often do you wear them? How many pairs do you own? How much have you paid for these? Um, you know, the brand, is there a brand, you know, what sort of fit do you like and what finished you? It gives you the ability to really ask some impactful questions of your potential customers. So that way you know what you need to go build. Uh, project three is uh, budgeting. So we're going to create uh, somewhere between a one and three year pro forma income statement uh, and a budget. So you're going to know exactly right away whether this thing makes money or not. It'll take you an hour. And inside of that hour, you're going to be like, wow, this, there is money in men's yoga pants uh, or not. All right. Final elevator pitch, um, you know, general description of the company and understanding of the market, uh, the revenue expense, amount needed to reach profitability, uh, and a closing statement of some sort, right, what I call the ask. And so if you take a look, general description is really you kind of getting your value uh, proposition, understanding the market, that's your market research, revenue expense, that's the budget thing that we do. So I like to build pieces and modules, right? If you're going to eat an elephant, start with the toe. And so that's what I do is that we put all these pieces together so that at the end of the day, you've got all the work done. Oh my goodness, this is the wrong... Points breakdown. Well done, Cologne. Hold on one second. I will correct this before I upload it. So here's the syllabus, and here's the points, right? There's five quizzes, but they're not that big of a deal, right? There's 25 points for each of them. And, um, and so I just, I have to do quizzes because each of the modules that we do, I need to test to make sure you have some general understanding. Uh, final exam is 100 points. There is no midterm. There are uh, 15 assignments and uh, the assignments are worth quite a bit. Um, so you got to do them. And uh, the assignments are worth almost 40% of the grade because that's the, that's the online piece of this equation. And we'll go over the assignments. They're not overly complicated, but they require you do work. And, and I got to tell you, the difference between students that get A's and students that get C's uh, are the people that do the assignments, right? You're, you're going to do relatively well on the quizzes. Uh, you're going to do okay on the final exam. You're not going to crush it. You're going to do great on all the projects, but that variable is really the assignments. And so there'll be a little bit of extra credit that I offer throughout the semester. And uh, But at the end of the day, you don't do the assignments, you're going to be begging for a C. And I mean begging for a C. And that's just not a good place to be, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, so we get 1,000 points. Uh, you get... 900 or more or get close right get in the ballpark give me 880 points I love to give A's but if you get less than 599 points 
uh, man, I give, I probably give as many F's as I do A's. And every F breaks my heart. I just, I don't like it, right? So Blackboard, uh, you guys, most of you have logged in, so that's brilliant. Important dates. Uh, last date to drop with an NGR is February 5th. Do me a favor, please. Before you drop, like reach out to me. Send me an email. Send me a text. Call me. Come visit me in my office and talk to me. Right? I get it. Life happens. You know, every semester I have students that become homeless or you know, they, they, they have child custody issues or they lose their job or they've got to pick up a second job. I get it. Right? And, uh, but I can totally work with you if I know what's happening. And we can, we can work it out. So, uh, but if you don't tell me and you just drop, man, it, it, it is too easy just to quit. Don't make it easy to quit. If you've got to quit, okay. But make it the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. Last day to apply for pass, no pass is February 16th. Once again, if you've got a little bit of anxiety about this class and you think, well, maybe I better just put pass, no pass, come talk to me. Everybody that's done pass, no pass, those people get A's. And so if you're thinking, well, maybe I'll just sign up for pass, no pass, don't do that, all right? Talk to me. It's going to be a general theme, right? Last day to apply for a degree, we have uh, AAs and we've got, we've got an AA and we've got uh, several certificates in entrepreneurship. If you're pursuing one of those, I need you to uh, apply for that by the 7th so we can get you into commencement. Last day to withdraw with a W is April 17th. Once again, so let's assume we get to April 17th. What does that mean? That means we get a month before class is over. If you think you're tracking an F and you're like, man, I better just take the W, what should you do? Right, right. I'm going to call Cologne and see what we can do. I'm going to see if there's a way if I can go back and make up those past assignments. I'm going to see if there's any extra credit I can do. I can go ahead and I can take a look and see how many points are left. I just have people that just check out. Don't just check out. I designed this class to do something extraordinary. So if you leave, you're going to miss some of the best parts of it. Psst, get out of there. No. Sorry, puppy. Um, one of the things that we get going on this, this semester is um, we've got our sixth elevator pitch competition. This one's going to be a little unique. Uh, we're participating in a statewide competition which is awesome because there'll probably be like 200 people competing. And I think that's amazing because personally, I like to beat a lot of other people. If I win, I don't want it to me like if I'm in a race and I'm, and I'm racing somebody, I, w I don't want the other guy to be like 92 years old in a wheelchair and I beat a guy. In a I want to beat like people that are as good or better than me because then you really beat them, right? You really win. So there's going to be a couple hundred people competing here. And you're competing for real money. These aren't scholarships. This is like they send you a check for 1500 bucks, and then you get to go do something really fun over the summer um, to kind of prepare people for that. We've got a class on campus one day a week, Entrepreneurship 16, called Making the Pitch. And uh, we meet once a night, and all we do is prepare you to participate in this competition. Somebody from Chabot will win, period period. So I've got some office hours, but honestly, you guys need to know I'm on campus a lot, right? So I'm on campus four days a week, sometimes five. I'm always going to be on campus on Thursdays, even though I don't have any office hours posted. Uh, Mondays, I'm probably going to be there till one or two o'clock. I try to get out before two because then traffic gets gnarly if I leave after two. Uh, same thing with Tuesdays. Most mornings, I'm an early guy. I'm like the guy walking on campus and it's still dark. And um, so if you've got an eight o'clock class, come by and see me. I've got a nice coffee machine. I got a couch in my office. You can come in, have a cup of coffee, uh, relax before class and talk to me, right? What's going on? The other way you can get me, I'm a pretty good texter and uh, for an old guy, right? Uh, and my thumbs, they move pretty good still. So uh, you got an issue, text me. I respond pretty quick. You can email me, and that's perfectly fine. But you know, then you got to wait for me to check email. And if I'm like in the middle of something, it might be several hours. You text me for the most part. I should be able to get back to you. Like I'm not going to say immediately, but pretty darn close, right? Uh, there's my my email address: mcolonishbookcollege.edu. My office: I'm in the 400 building, which is one of the new buildings. 
Where is the 400 building? It's in between the 300 and the 500 building. Uh, it's just set back a little bit. Very nice building. Go upstairs. I'm in the back on the right-hand side. I've got the best office in that building. Come see it. It's really, you've got a giraffe in there. Great. And penguin wearing a lei. It's awesome. You'll love my, playing congas from Puerto Rico. You'll love my office. Come in, say hello. So path to success. This, this, is, this, is, this is almost common sense, right? Do the work. Uh, uh, and don't cheat, right? I know there's some of you that are going to be like, you know, honey, I, uh, I'm super busy this week. Can you do my assignment? And, um, uh, and, and don't do that, right? Because then your partner, they, uh, they get the learning. You don't. They get the grade. But the problem is with getting a grade you didn't earn is that when you put that on a resume or you represent that you took that class and you did well, there's expectations that you actually know what the heck you're talking about. So cheating just doesn't do you any good because you will be discovered, right? If you're not discovered in my class, you will be discovered when you get into the workplace and people are like, wait a minute, I thought you took this class. You should know these things, right? The other thing is, is be nice. I can't tell you how valuable that is. You know, the, uh, if you are 20% smart and 80% nice, the world will open for you. It really will, right? Because there's not that many nice people. People are standoffish and they're a little, you know what I'm saying? But if you're a nice person and you smile and it's like when you're two years old and you're in the sandbox with other kids, you know, the cool kid, you know, would share their toys and they were laughing and having fun. That's the kid everybody wanted to play with. It's the same when you become older, right? You, if, you're, if you're too caught up in trying to be cool with attitude and you want to be G, Man, that world, the world you're going to be able to compete in is going to be smaller. So be smart, but more important, be nice. Be flexible. I'm going to try to um, grade every week, but sometimes that's not going to happen because I've got a bunch of other like real business stuff that I'm doing. And I think that's important that I continue to do that uh, because then I can bring back real world experience into my classes. So maybe it's going to take, I might miss grading for a week or commenting for a week and, uh, and I'll be flexible with you right? You communicate with me, I can be flexible. So here's the part that's really, really important to me is I need everybody to raise their right hand. It, dude, even you raise your right hand. I'm, I'm not going to go forward until you raise your right hand. Okay. You agree that if you become successful because of this class, you either agree to come back and teach at Chabot College or to underwrite a scholarship for another student. Do you all agree? You have to say yes. Okay, great. Thank you very much. There's, there's a big reason why I do this. Because I have expectations. I have expectations that what you're going to learn in this class is going to absolutely have an impact on your life. Or I wouldn't teach it. I'm one of those guys. I don't have to teach. right? I wouldn't teach this class if I didn't think that what I was trying to teach you could actually have an impact. So my expectation is that I'm going to give you something extraordinary. You're going to take it. You're going to go do something amazing with it. And then you're going to come back and we're going to create this little cycle of people that are doing extraordinary things. So maybe you can't teach, right? But maybe you'll come in and talk to one of my students. I've got that all the time. Or maybe you can't teach. You don't have time to come talk to my students, but you're going to send a check and you're going to help a student get to go to, uh, to continue to take entrepreneurship classes. So I do that for a very specific reason because I have expectations of greatness. I really do. That's just not talk. All right, let's take a look at Blackboard. So uh, you log in, you're going to see announcements, right? For the most part, these burn off after about a week. Um, syllabus is here now. Thank you to the students that pointed out the fact that I had not uploaded it. I was running pretty hard this week and I completely forgot to up. I love it. That, that would be the sound of our new puppy. Hey, Drew, Psh! I am so sorry. Um, I should have just closed my office door. Uh, here's my information. You can get, you know, get on the app, just pull my mobile number down and you can, uh, um, uh, you can get a hold of me pretty easy. Course information, everything you really need is here, right? It'll tell you, Psh! Oh, there's something outside. Uh, it'll tell you what to do, right? I've got a bunch, got a bunch of great videos. Uh, the assignment this week is pretty straightforward. Tell me about you. Do you have any experience with um, uh, entrepreneurship, right? Next week, 
Once again, pretty straightforward, read something. Uh, assignment two, it really is, I want you to focus on uh, you know, listening to this. You know, what problem uh, are, are these guys solving, right? What did they do? Um, some of these videos are amazing. A quick note, this video here is also in the next folder. So like week three, and week three, the specific is, you know, what do you think motivated this guy? I love it. The video is like 15 minutes. And um, I love that video. It really is, man. It's a, it's, a, it's a guy who absolutely has a passion and a love for his country or, or his continent, I guess, more broadly. So a um, couple of great videos here. I love Steve Wynn. This is the guy that owns the Wynn Hotel. Obviously, most of you are going to know Elon Musk. Uh, you know, he's the guy that, uh, that started, uh, um, uh, Tesla, um, tools here. Here's, this is how you get to your grades and, uh, click my grades and, and you'll be able to get there. So pretty straightforward. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate. Give me a call and, um, we'll work it through. And once again, excuse the puppy barking. I'm going to go give it a treat or figure out what the heck, heck it wants. Have a good Sunday.